you have the PowerPoint as well, Michael, just in case, you know. Now. OK, Orla is just letting uh, the uh, the guests in now, so we'll just wait for a few moments. My name is uh, David Quinn. I'm one of the co-chairs of the uh, DL832 animation programme. And Michael, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, hold on. Yeah, you're good. Hi, I'm Michael Connerty, and I'm the co-chair of uh, the animation program and I also teach uh, animation and film history on the program. That's it and I also am a very ordinary lecturer even though uh, I you know I chaired the program with Michael um, we're a program team that works together rather than mm. you know uh, a team of lecturers and then administrators uh, running the program. Sadly we don't have any administrators but uh, that's <laughs> it. Now I got to get uh, the two most important people uh, to introduce themselves. Uh, Michelle and Yuan from uh, year three of animation and year two, uh, four of animation. So Michelle you want to go ahead? Yeah hello my name is Michelle and I'm a third year student at IDT for animation. Cool and Yuan? Hi, I'm Ewan. I'm a final year student at IDT Animation. That's it. So in a couple of minutes, I'll say we'll uh, we'll start the presentation. I have a very the format of this meeting is uh, I have a PowerPoint presentation. It also will be placed up as a PDF on the uh, website. I think Ruth will look after that uh, when we're done. Um, it's basic information. It's all the information you can get on the website as well. Uh, there's a lot of information on the website, uh, you know, about portfolio application, about the program, about uh, uh, project days, etc. So, um, you know, the website is really an important place to go. We we'll, we we'll include some of the links on the PowerPoint and in the PDF as well. And uh, you know, we've uh, we've a, co a couple of. Uh, uh, phases that you key dates you need to hit and uh, things you need to do uh, between now and completing your application um we'll talk in general about the program about portfolios and about the project days okay so we're still getting people in here um yeah so another minute or so and uh, what i'm going to do is i'm just going to share my screen here this is always slightly terrifying in uh, Teams. And what I'm going to do is uh, just put up the PowerPoint here. Can everyone see that? Yep. Yeah, cool. That's good. I'll put this over here. OK. Now, and apologies, Michelle, it's your year three group when you were in year one there, as uh, I noticed on the. Uh, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> they were babies. Oh, that wasn't that it seemed to be a blink of an eye ago, you know, when you were in year one, you know, and everything was online. Okay. Yeah, that's it. OK, are we good to go? Will we start this? Um... Yeah, we can kick off now. Yeah, Let's very go. good. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. okay. So my, uh, I'm just trying to get a key up here now. Okay, there we go. So my name is David Quinn, and uh, Michael Connerty is uh, uh, the other lecturer uh, on this this call. Uh, Michael and I are uh, very ordinary lecturers. Michael is a CCS, a Critical and Cultural Studies, an academic lecturer uh, in the animation program, and uh, I'm an animation lecturer. Uh, my specialities are. Uh, uh, stop motion, filmmaking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I predominantly look after year three groups and year four groups, etc. But really, I have contact with uh, both of us have contact with all four year groups, and uh, that's very much the way the animation program is run. It's a very small team. We know all the students. You know, we usually know them by name, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We work with them very informally, first name basis. Uh, it's you know, it's kind of a cool program. 
Uh, so that's it. Uh, the program is called, the study program is called uh, DL832 animation. OK, um, D8 is just for level eight. It's a bachelor's uh, a BA honors uh, program uh, and 32 is the number of it. So 832 animation. It's in the Department of Film and Media National Film School in IADT. OK, and then we have two students as well here. Michelle Breva, uh, who's a, a year three student. Uh, uh, Michelle and her team are, you know, working on client projects with me at the moment. Uh, they'll be finished in mid February, and uh, they'll move on then to a preparatory module at the end of year three. And then we have Yuan as well from year four, and Yuan is a kind of a war year student. Uh, Yuan's working on a major project at the moment and on a dissertation as well, which we will get to. Okay, so. Our program is a BA honors undergraduate program. OK, it's four years long. It's an ab initio program. That means we take you from the very beginning. OK, and you come in and you learn from scratch. Basically, you don't need uh, to know how to do this stuff before you come in. In fact, we kind of you know dissuade people from you know knowing too much, we'll say. Uh, so you come in and we will take you through the fundamentals and then into more advanced stuff. So year one and year two, you know, traditionally have always been learning fundamental skills, drawing, animation principles, design, critical and cultural studies, digital skills, experimental. Year three, then you start working in groups, you're working with industry projects, prepar you're preparing for year four major project and a dissertation as well. The academic component is a key component, writing, critical thinking, etc., is a key component of what we do. Um, it's kind of 25% of all the grades, etc., etc. It's a very important component. It's not separated from the practical work. We try to get the students from an early stage to relate what they're learning in academic, you know, through books and through research, et cetera, et cetera, to relate that knowledge uh, to uh, what they're doing in their practical uh, projects. And that includes, you know, contextualization, how they fit into the world of media, into the history of media, where they find their place, et cetera, et cetera. In year four, then it's the final year of the undergraduate program and you do a major project and a dissertation. You know, it's broken into several modules, but that's really what you're working on a major project. It can be a film, it can be something else, et cetera, et cetera. And then a dissertation, a piece of research about something that you love, but done in an academic way. OK. So from September 2021, we uh, brought in a new program shape, and this was the program that you will be going into when you have a successful application uh, to animation. So in year one and year two, again, we learn fundamental skills, you know, animation principles, drawing, research, academic writing, uh, et cetera, et cetera, design, et cetera. Uh, but now it's learned through integrated projects. You get early group working, you get cross faculty work, et cetera, et cetera. And you also get the opportunity, you know, from year one and year two to do early creative and film projects rather than exercises and small little bits and pieces. It's a little bit more integrated, a bit more holistic, etc. There's much more opportunity for experimentation, for creative risk taking, etc, etc. And then in year three, it's very similar to the way it is at the moment. It just flipped a little bit. One change is we have an opportunity for, in the new shape from next year. Uh, we have uh, an opportunity to do a full semester two, you know, so after Christmas in year three, industry placement or industry or client projects, which were very good and experience of bringing in to IADT, or you can go on Erasmus Mobility internationally or to one of our partner uh, institutions uh, around Europe. OK. Um, you'll also learn things like ethics, you'll learn business and entrepreneurial skills, interdisciplinarity, you learn about ecology, the ecology of animation, the, the ecology of the film business, and you learn a real 21st century social consciousness. These are the things that we've built into the new program. Now, the new program is a work in progress. You know, it's, it's it, you know, uh, you know, our students, year one and year two, have been very, very kind of keen and enthusiastic guinea pigs on the new program, you know, and, you know, we find teasing troubles and we fix them. Uh, one of the great things about our program is we write our programs and we write the programs, you know, uh, you know, with great interaction with the student group. So if there are problems, we try to identify the problems, fix them, and then uh, we update our, uh, our whole program. In year four, then it's very similar to the conventional thing. There's major project and dissertation, but there's a much stronger integration then with 
postgraduate study pathways, especially into masters. And over the coming years, this is something we're going to try and really push is that, you know, students not only stay for four years of undergraduate studies, but, you know, some of them and more of them increasingly will be able to stay uh, with us in IADT to do, you know, masters in animation, et cetera, et cetera. You know, uh, you know, once they're bedded into IADT, there's no reason why they should leave before they complete their studies with a full masters. OK. These are some of the external clients uh, that we work with. We work with uh, mental health, uh, youth mental health organizations like Jigsaw. Um, we work with uh, hospitals like the NRH. We work with other universities and uh, institutions like uh, UCC, NUIG, RCSI, Trinity, et cetera, et cetera. And these are just you know people that we've worked with in the past two years. I mean, and there's uh, any number of other clients that we're working uh, with at the moment. A lot of people just come to us as an animation they know we can tell really effective stories using really effective animation and visual language uh, techniques um, to disseminate knowledge about the vital work that they do, whether it's in youth mental health or medicine or whatever. Um, you know, and we've had some absolutely national leading projects over the past few years, uh, you know, building on 20 years experience uh, uh, of student work uh, dealing with uh, external clients. And we're going to continue with that work um, now. On portfolio, there are portfolio guidelines. Uh, uh, these are from a couple of years ago. Uh, so, you know, again, apologies if they're a little bit uh, out of date. I don't think they are, though. What we're normally looking for in animation is um, a variety of observational drawings. OK, uh, we're looking for evidence that you're interested in drawing. You know, your ability we can work on, but we just want to see that you have a habit of drawing and interest in drawing and observational drawings means, you know, drawing from life. That means, you know, it's not drawing in a classical sense in a, uh, you know, a studio with, you know, uh, nude models, et cetera, et cetera. No, life drawing for us is observational drawing. That means notebook drawing, drawing in, you know, train stations and bus stations, drawing in cafes, et cetera, drawings of friends, family. If you've got animals at home, pets, et cetera, et cetera, draw them, draw them, draw off the telly, et cetera, et cetera, landscapes, objects, whatever, you know, but mainly people and animals, you know, uh, things that move, you know, um, that's really what we're looking for more than anything. And then you can show us a wide range of creative work, you know, uh, you know, it can be, you know, anything creative, conceptual, you know, anything that shows your uh, production and storytelling skills. Okay. Um, if you do have ex examples of animated film work that you've done at a summer school or weekends in IEDT or wherever, um, do include it, you know, uh, you know, show us examples of that digitally and uh, we'll look through it and, uh, you know, we won't be highly critical, but again, it shows that you're really interested in the subject. Your portfolio should reflect your interest in art, in animation, we hope, and in the world around you. We do get applicants and we say, what's your interest in animation? And they say, um, I'm not really interested in animation. And that's kind of the wrong answer. We need people who are really engaged and are interested in animation and are very keen to do it, et cetera, et cetera. And know why they want to do it as well. That really helps too. It, it, you know, if you don't know that, you know, uh, there's no problem, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll help you with that. But again, it's nice to have some idea about it. We also look for a minimum of two storyboards. Now, these could be very simple six panel storyboards. OK, very simple. OK, um, but storyboards, you know, again, it says here is they're like comics, comic strips with the speech bubbles. OK, you know, we're looking for a key outline moments of a sequence, you know, um, you know, that tells maybe not a full story, but something of an event or something like this. You know, it's nice if it has a beginning, it's nice if it has a nice ending or whatever as well, you know, um, and tell that economically in six panels with very simple artwork. You know, how do you do that really neatly? There are examples of storyboards uh, on the website, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, what the storyboards show is that you are thinking about film, OK, and that you are thinking about animation as filmmaking. And that's really what we want to, uh, uh, you know, get across. There's nice guidelines on the other side here. Be organized. Do not copy from photographs. Be clear. Include a CV by all means. You know, be selective. You know, don't show us every piece of work you've ever done since you were three. You know, show us your best stuff, you know. And by all means, this is an important bit down here at the bottom. Include notebooks, sketchbooks, journals and visual diaries. OK, we like notebooks. OK, and we count notebooks as a single piece of work. You know, so again, 
if you've got a packed notebook that's really shown your ideas, your inventiveness, et cetera, et cetera, we want to see it and we will root through it. There's no doubt about it. Okay. Now, on the portfolio, the 1st of February is uh, 2023 is the CAO deadline. So you've got to elect to, you know, you know, say that I want to do animation and IDT or whatever courses as well. Um, then your portfolio will normally include your observational drawings, your creative work, your notebooks. OK, your portfolio will also include things, a selection of your best original artworks. OK. It should show your interest in art, animation, and the world around you. Okay, and a minimum of two storyboards. Okay, so again, it's repeating the guidance of the uh, thing. Um, it's not a requirement, but if you have relevant photographs or prints, please include these also. Another thing is, if you have 3D work, photograph it. You know, get some nice photographs in nice light, etc. And there's some nice guidelines on the uh, the website about photographing your work and digitizing it, as we call it. Okay. Um, Peter Reavers did a lovely piece on that, uh, you know, very talented photographer um, and, you know, it's very helpful stuff. So don't be a bit intimidated. Use your phone, get some nice light and get the work uh, into a digital format. Upload it to the uh, portfolio. Another thing we ask for is, uh, and this is not a biggie, but we like critical analysis and it's written pieces. You could pick from your portfolio two pieces of the work which have helped you learn the most, right? A short, a few hundred words. This is not even a page, okay? A few hundred words of your critical analysis of each piece of work you've chosen. Consider things like your creative challenges, what worked, what didn't work, what you learned. What would you do differently in the future? Or you could pick some of your storyboards, write a short maximum of 200 words again, uh, or a few hundred words, critical analysis of each storyboard. Explain the creative process, the creative challenges, um, your film thinking, why you use this shot, that shot, why this background, that background, what worked and what didn't work. And again, what would you do differently? Critical analysis is not a deal breaker here. OK, if you if you feel intimidated by it, just forget it. OK, but it is something that we encourage. It is something we like to see. It's something we um, we like to know you're thinking about filmmaking and visual language and creativity. You know, uh, it's not just about doing. It's also about thinking, thinking about how we could do differently, how you could do something that is completely different to somebody else as well. You know, it's not about emulation and copying. It's about doing real creative inventive work. OK, so again, on the digital portfolio platform and you've got to be registered, you know, by the 1st of February on the CAO uh, uh, platform first. OK. On the IADT digital portfolio platform, um, we open for digital portfolio submissions until five o'clock on Monday, the 20th of March, uh, 2023. We do a project days running in February midterm break. Um, animation does offer a project day option. I'll come to a project day in a while. Closing day for the project day submissions is also on the online platform uh, 1700 on Monday, the 20th of March. And the reality is, you know, and don't be intimidated by this. The reality is that most animation applicants, uh, applicants create a portfolio. Most of the applicants for our study program create a portfolio. They often come to the project days to enhance their portfolio, to ask us questions, to deal with us, you know, to work with us for the day. But most of them are submitting a portfolio as well. Um, now, it does happen that somebody, you know, comes into a project day and they just do really outstanding work. They submit that and, you know, we say, look, there's not, no question. They're, they're ready to start and uh, we get in. But it, it's rare. OK, you know, but it can happen. OK, again, this is the portfolio guidelines again. Project day is 21st to 23rd or 23rd of uh, February. And again, we can confirm that with Arla and Mary. Um, uh, um, you get a brief, you register on the IDT website. There's a guidelines available there, very nice guidelines. You try and do some of the work at home. It, uh, it's done online. Uh, it's supervised in the sense that, you know, there's guidance from lecturers on the day. You know, if you register, if you're on for the 13th of February or whatever, there's uh, animation lecture there and they will guide, they will ask, ask, answer questions. But it's really an opportunity for you to do your work. You've got the guidance. If you have any questions about the project day brief, you ask the questions and it's really, it's a nice, you know, a quiet working day online, you know, um, and then uh, you submit to the online portfolio platform by the 20th of March. Um, when that's done, you get a score based on the work soon after. You can still submit the portfolio, you know, uh, which also is the same deadline, March the 20th. 
Um, and then the vital thing here, portfolio points, uh, it's a maximum of 600 uh, points uh, in the leave and cert points, you know, which is important, you know, because 600 is, you know, it's a it's a high score. It's, you know, it's difficult to get that through the leave and cert alone, never mind uh, in any other way. So again, 600 is available for, uh, you know, a, a good portfolio and a good portfolio does not need to be a perfect portfolio. It just means that we have assessed it and said, this work is really strong. They show a real interest in animation, a real interest in drawing. Um, they're kind of ready to go. We could take these people into this person into first year and we could work with them immediately. And, you know, that would kind of get you a 600 portfolio. Um, no problem. OK, now my now. OK. The project is again a piece of work that responds to a team. There's teams this year. I can't remember offhand. There are three teams, but they're there in the guidance. I'll go through them. Uh, you do some research, you do some developments, you do some images and drawings, and you synthesize that into a particular outcome. Um, and here's where the brief is. Okay, uh, this 2023. You will need to register beforehand, uh, and this is where uh, you register on on the website. Okay. Um, you get the guided piece or pieces done collaboratively online during the midterm break, the 13th and 15th of February. Um, and again, lecture guidance means there will be lectures from animation there. They'll be there to answer questions, but it's a very, very uh, chilled day. OK, and then it's uploaded onto the uh, IDT portfolio platform. So that's basically it, you know, um, the portfolio remains the primary mode of entry for fact programs, um, you know, and for animation. OK, don't be intimidated by this. If you don't have your portfolio done, uh, you know, the guidance is and we were discussing this before we came in really, um, you know, the guidance is submit what you have, you know, don't be hypercritical about your own work. Chances are you're ready to go. And, you know, if you've engaged with open days and you know something about the program and you've worked on your portfolio for a while, um, chances are the, the work is absolutely fair. You know, don't delay, just submit, see how it goes. Um, there's also the thing as well that, you know, animation routinely, because we had a pay, space restriction, had extremely high points, you know. Um, and again, a lot of people are really put off and say, oh, I'll never get that. The points are too high. One change in the system this year is that there is a new program. It's called 3D animation in IDT, and it will concentrate on CGI computer animation. OK, and what we're hoping is that the applicants for that will take some of the pressure off the animation applications as well. So with any look, hopefully, because there are going to be 20 people in the 3D animation program, um, that will be, you know, 20 less people that will be uh, uh, clogging up the uh, IDT animation program, our generalist program, OK? Um, and hopefully the, the points will come down. And then as, you know, we have a new building just started, et cetera, et cetera. As we get more space, the points will inevitably be come down. But again, don't worry about that. Don't second guess that. Just put in your application and let's uh, talk about how you're doing. OK, um, chances are you're um, good to go. Now, again, I will uh, I've handed this uh, PDF, a PDF of, of this PowerPoint over our two um, uh, emails are here, Michael and I. Feel free to email us. Um, hopefully, by the end of this session, we'll have answered uh, a lot of the questions that come in. OK, but uh, if you do have something that's bugging you or, or if something comes up over the next couple of, uh, few weeks, feel free to email us. We're busy people, uh, genuinely. Um, uh, everyone in IGT is very busy, but again, we will try to make time to answer your questions. And if we can't answer your questions, we'll pass it on to uh, somebody in admissions who can answer it, et cetera, et cetera. So again, that's it. OK, now I'm going to stop sharing here. Uh, stop sharing. OK, and we're back in here. OK. Okie doke. So on the chat then. Um, and where do we start? Where will we can start? I, Mike, yeah, go ahead. Can I go, go, jump go. in, Dave, just really yeah. quick. I, I just noticed in the in the chat there's a couple of questions about the uh, the number of panels that should be uh, in the 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 storyboard. Um, so we're not super uh, prescriptive about that. Um, I think there's two people asking. One person has twelve. One has eighteen. They're both fine. Um, just just bear in mind that you should, uh, you know, two pages or something like that is is plenty. You know, we're not going to have time to read through a whole 90 minutes worth of a, of a storyboard. Uh, so 12 panels, 18 panels, that's absolutely fine. And just just remember that you're trying to 
visually convey um, a story. So there's it's it's different from comics in that you don't have a big influence or emphasis on on text, although you can have a bit of text underneath each uh, each panel. But it's what we're looking for is um, cinematic kind of visual thinking that you're able to tell a story using using pictures. Uh, but don't worry if you're you know don't worry too much about the the number of panels. 12, 18 is 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 fine, folks. I'll just I'll just respond to your question there, Linda, as well. Um about the uh, the critical analysis. Um it um I suppose it 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 it's it's again not something that we're very prescriptive about, but it probably makes sense to include it with just to, to include it with the uh, the piece that you're talking about, um, or at least make it very clear if you are referring to a piece in your portfolio that, that, that that's what it is. Um, it may be we have had instances in the past of people including kind of critical analyses of of work that that isn't included in the portfolio that might be work by uh, by somebody else. Um, in which case, again, just just be really clear what what it is that the the analysis refers to. Yeah, we had we had an exercise in one of the project days a couple of years ago where we we um, shared a link for a film. It was actually a grad film, I think, and uh, we said do a little piece about that. You know, you know. So they had to look at this short film, and then they had to kind of you know uh, give us their thoughts on it in terms of the colors used and the animation techniques etc again critical analysis you know is just you know it's an exercise of kind of looking at a piece of work you know your own work someone else's work and then really explaining you know in in a few lines really what your thinking is on it you know and what you're trying to impress is that like you know kind of i'm thinking in animation terms i'm thinking like a filmmaker etc cetera, etc cetera, you know um so that's it, you know. Uh, somebody as well had a question there about: um, uh, Are we able to ask uh, IADT professors for uh, a critique of our portfolio before submitting it before the project? Day? You know, it's something. You know, it's something that we say to people sometimes. Look, you know, we'll we'll offer it informally. It's very, in reality, it's very difficult for us to organise it. You know, um, it just it's a time constraint. Um, if you engage with the project day, it's often a good time to ask those questions and remember the project days are mid-February uh, there will be IDT lecturers there you know and uh, you know that's the time to ask them a little question about your portfolio or whatever you know and if you've got work to show you know be ready to show it etc etc again they might have a little bit of time on the project day to, to have a look at that you know can videos be put in portfolio um if I wanted the storyboard a piece of audio, obviously not a whole song, but something uh, something that's 30, 30 seconds, y you can. Now, I have to warn you this, OK? A music video is not a film, OK? So it doesn't really show a whole lot of great film thinking necessarily. But again, yes, you know, uh, it's, it's it, if it's done brilliantly well, that's what I'm saying, uh, Kira, you know, put it in. <laughs> I'll, I'll, ju I'll just jump in on a, on a kind of a... A related question that just there from Sophie about uh, whether you can submit a, a thirty-page uh, comic um, uh, that's storyboarded. I mean, it sounds like. I mean, if that's a comic, comic, um, you know, with speech balloons and rather than a, a storyboard, we'd be more than happy to to see it. Thirty pages is 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 a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> the do be do bear in mind that uh you know much as we're going to pay lots of of attention to the work that you folks uh, send to us we're we're going to be looking at a lot of work and uh you know our time is going to be limited so you do want to you know uh, apply some editorial thinking to to what goes into your portfolio so i would say in your case sophie if you could maybe excerpt um you know five or six pages from that uh, and and it's fine to include it as a comic, as an as an example yeah. of uh, of your your kind of uh, you know visual storytelling abilities, and then and then maybe think in terms of doing a storyboard separately. Um, yeah. And I think for all of you, it's probably as as Dave said, it's worth thinking about the differences between a comic and a storyboard. They are quite uh, different beasts. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I mm. think the great thing there, Sophie, might be to take 
you know, one sequence in your your 30 page comic and just say, no, I'm going to translate that into animation. So, you know, using the power of animation and filmmaking, how is that slightly different to the comic? You know, because I, I agree with Michael, I think it should be different. So, Michelle, what did you put in in terms of storyboard when you put in your portfolio? Uh, mine was incredibly simple. It was just the 12th like panel story. Very yeah. simple. I did it digitally just to kind of help yeah uh, go through it quicker and kind of tone it but yeah it was very simple nothing to yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing on the like the works of like pixar or disney storyboards yeah, yeah, yeah but again simple and that's why i say six panels if you can tell the story in six panels you're really showing some facility you know um you know ewan what did you put in uh, in terms of the storyboards i think mine was probably around 12 panels yeah, uh, yeah. i printed out a template and I drew in it on with pencil yeah um pretty simple yeah I think I chose for one of them was a, a very self-contained thing and one of them was like an excerpt of an idea I had yeah yeah and Alexandra is asking there, where can we find the examples of storyboards that were mentioned previously? There were examples on the website. I'll check again, Alexandra. If they're not there, what I would say to you is that we'll try and include that as part of the project days as well. We'll have examples there for the lecturers to, to run through. And again, they're, it's not rocket science, but again, it would reassure you, actually, this is quite simple. You know, uh, you know, they won't be in any way perfect storyboards, OK? Uh, but, you know, it will be kind of, uh, uh, you know, an example of this is the kind of thing this this is a six uh, six board uh, six panel board. This is a, a twelve panel board. You know, and again, remember now, the reason we're asking for storyboards is that you know storyboards show you know that you're thinking about telling a story visually, you know, in a sequenced way, a kind of linear way, you know, and uh, you know that's a great skill, a beginning, a mini, a middle, and an end, you know, and you know if you can do that very economically. Mm, that's kind of very animation storyboarding. Okay, it's not as uh, Ewan said. You know, we're not looking for kind of you know Pixar or anything like that at this stage. We're looking for very mm. simple, you know, nice clear storytelling. You know, mm. so that's it. Yeah. Can Is there? Can I yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go go go. Just, just quickly. Sorry now to cut across today. Just yeah. as I see uh, questions, I just see Catherine there asking. Uh, it's a replace uh, for sketchbooks with original characters and uh, designs. Um, oh. Absolutely, oh yes. Oh my God, yes, absolutely, um, Catherine. Yeah, so, <laughs> we, so, we love I mean, notebooks. <laughs> we do. I mean, the, and the, the beauty of notebooks is that that's where you can really um, uh, show the kind of range of of your your kind of uh, artistic interests, and 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 also we like to get some sense that you're prepared to experiment make mistakes, be messy, you know, have a go at different styles, different approaches. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're 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 certainly, you know, we're on an animation program. We're never going to turn away any work that has to do with character uh, and, and character design. And if that's if those are rendered in a very kind of cartoony, simplified, uh, unrealistic uh, style, fantastic. And, yeah. um, you know, yeah. it, we, we don't. We don't want to be prescriptive about what kind of style or approach people take to, to their drawings or or, or yeah. uh, what 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 type of material. So you can stuff the sketchbooks with all kinds of stuff, uh, yeah. we, we, you know. And the great thing about notebooks as well, you know, really an honest notebook will really show a, a real chronological development, you know, because a notebook is generally done over a period of time, be it weeks or months or, you know, even, you know, our students routinely go through notebooks in a few days, you know, even a day, you know, um, you know, but um, again, it shows development, you know, the, the drawings at the front of the notebook should be kind of, you know, a little bit stiffer. And then at the end of the notebook, they're a little bit more accomplished and flowing, et cetera, et cetera, you know. Um, will the uh, dates for submission and project day be similar to uh, 2024? <laughs> Uh, yeah, they, they would. It's around the same time of year every time, you know, that, that's it, you know. Um, are any of the portfolios of students public? I'd love to get some inspiration from them. Now, Arthur, the thing there is that, yes, they are, but it, you'd you'd have to come in uh, on uh, the the open days, uh, the physical open days in in November, you know. Uh, we laid the portfolios out on the tables and, uh, you know, we um, uh, people can leaf through them. They can take hours over them sometimes just looking through, you know. Um, and we used to, years ago, put out really good portfolios. I mean, 
portfolios that were nearly perfect. But we found that was extremely intimidating. So now we just put out portfolios from year one students who were accepted last year. And uh, that's it, you know. Um, what are the four categories they mark the portfolios by? Oh, my God. Uh, oh, it, um, what are they, Michael? Um, there's. You no, know, uh, I, uh, I was just looking. At, I mean, that's that's a very good question. It's Charlotte. a great I mean, question. Art, they, it's use of media is one, isn't it? Yeah. You know, um, they're really shallow. There's, it's not any rocket science or mystery at all. They're four really kind of, uh, you know, very um, simple criteria. It will be something I think it's use yeah. of media, uh, originality, and yeah. I, I think one of them is is has to do with animation readiness. Yeah, yeah. Um, and but that's something now I was just actually trying there because the the, the portal for last year's kind of uh, um, portfolio assessment is no longer open. But if yeah. you email us directly, we we can uh, we'll, we'll get hold of that the, the precise categories uh, for you. Yeah. Yeah. Neve is asking with the course, do you study all modes of animation, 2D, 3D, stop motion, etc., or is there more of an emphasis on one more than the other? Now, I got to say we, we create the. Uh, opportunity for the students to study all modes. It, ours is an unapologetically generalist animation program. So we like to think that we give the opportunity to students to learn the techniques um, and to learn hardware and software solutions that they want to learn. OK, and we try to support them in that, etc. Now, there is a kind of tendency to uh, focus on one technique or the other, you know, and at the moment, because there are a lot of jobs in in Ireland in the 2D animation sphere, a lot of our students, uh, uh, you know, really focus on 2D animation. But that doesn't mean that we don't have uh, students doing stop motion, doing mixed media, doing more experimental, uh, doing CG, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, Michelle, what would you say you would, uh, you know, kind of favour, or or have you made that decision yet because you're in year three? You know. <laughs> um, well, in terms of animation, um. I've always kind of preferred 2D hand drawn. Yeah. But you know, I know that I'm more of a like design person. Yeah. So that's kind of where my uh yeah. strongest uh skills are. Yeah. And that's another important point as well. Remember now, all of you that you know animation is just not one thing okay animation itself you know character performance animation you know be it in 2d or cg or stop motion is one aspect but remember there's a range of other uh, skills that we need you know and michelle will testify to this you know she's on an industry project at the moment you need people doing backgrounds you need people doing compositing digital work you know you need people organizing the project you know and knowing all about the process etc cetera, etc cetera, you know so again you know you need uh, a lot of skills to get a, 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 an animation project delivered, you know, so we don't leave. We don't concentrate on anything uh, in particular, but we allow the students to decide, decide that uh, focus themselves. You know, we we give them we open the door to all the t different techniques and then we allow them to make the decisions. You and when did you decide to take your pathway? We'll say, you know, you also would be a very, very accomplished very very stylish uh animator i would say you know <laughs> um i think i was always focused on 2d animation um like myself and michelle we're both uh, more design focused people we're like yeah. in the pre-production section um it's just the type of art i gravitated towards as an illustrator kind of background yeah um i hope that answers the question Ah, yeah, no, I think uh, definitely, you know, Grace is asking here, what's the difference between notebooks and sketchbooks? There's kind of no difference, Grace, you know, <laughs> that, that is, you know we'd, we'd count them both the same, you know, that's it. What we'd say is just, you know, pack the notebooks. Another thing there now, style of drawing. We aren't looking for really detailed, fine art, rendered, shaded drawings. What we're looking for is really quick drawings. This is animation, remember now. We don't have any time, things are moving, and we need to create an illusion of life. And that means kind of creating that illusion, you know, of animals, of people moving, et cetera, et cetera, using the minimum amount of lines. It's a skill that you've got to learn. And you do that by drawing really quickly. And so in notebooks, you know, we're looking for not just one drawing that you took ages to do and you shaded and all the rest of it, you know, we're looking for a lot of quick drawings, you know, and that's really, uh, you know, our our meat and drink, you know. 
How do how do you submit it on the notebook? Yeah, go oh, yeah. ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, yeah, no, yeah. you're fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. I was just just going to to respond to that particular uh, question there from Kira, which kind of follows on from the the the, the previous yeah. one. But there's there is um, there's a couple of ways that you can you can submit uh, the the notebook here. Um, some people do choose to. Um, to, to submit it as a film, so a kind of point of view shot, uh, you know, just just flicking through at yeah. a you know steady pace through the pages, um, which uh, that can be very effective. You know, make sure that's you know reasonably again, you know, sort of uh, sixty seconds would be quite long um, for a flick through a notebook. Other people uh, choose to kind of compile the pages into a into a PDF and and uh, submit it that way. Uh, either way is is absolutely fine. I would. Uh, tend uh, following on from something that Dave said earlier on that we like to get a sense of kind of progression and we love uh, we love messiness and and so on. Yeah. That I would tend to suggest that you you don't particularly cherry pick. Um, you know that that do try and and uh, uh, show a, a kind of an, a notebook in its kind of natural state, as as it were. Uh, I think Dave used the term an honest. Uh, notebook, yeah. So that's that's something that we that we like to see. So don't don't get too editorial on the on the notebooks. I think. Yeah, I think uh, you know applicants sometimes get kind of uh, you know a little over obsessed with kind of tidiness and things being clean and perfect and everything. No, no, no. We we like to see some mistake making. You know, some genuine kind of errors. You know, some bad drawings. You know, messiness is really cool. And sometimes out of the messiness, you say actually that's really interesting. You know, sometimes you know, and the, the you know uh, Michelle and Ewan will know this from animation. Like sometimes you can clean the life out of things completely you know uh, you know when we do clean up and drawings if you do that too much it can take the life away from it and animation is all about creating that illusion of life you know um glad is asking uh, what kind of materials or programs do you need you actually don't need any materials or programs, okay uh, you know we're not asking you to learn anything uh, before you come in, like if you have done programs before, you know, it relates to portfolio development or animation or whatever, that's super cool. Um, tell us about that experience, you know, and tell us about what you learned. But we don't need you to know any of that stuff. We'll take you from the start, you know, ab initio, um, and uh, you come in. In terms of materials, I mean, our students do go through a lot of notebooks and things like this. We try our best. We really do try. And uh, faculty are very supportive. Uh, with us, we try our best to buy as many of those materials for um, the students as we can, you know. Um, so, you know, that's, you know, that's really cool. You know, Michelle, did you, uh, w w was your portfolio submission online or was it physical? Yeah, it was online. So yeah. So had, and what yeah. was the experience like then? Because it's the same process that uh, the, 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 these applicants will be going through, you know. Yeah, so I just basically compiled everything on one day, had everything laid out in front of me, took photos with good light, good lighting. Yeah. And then when it came to sketchbooks, I just laid them out on my table and I just took a, like an, a video, just me flipping through it and just uploaded it as a link on YouTube. Yeah. And she was successful. <laughs> you see, <Yay>. that's it. <laughs> and then you and were, was your portfolio online or was it uh, physical? No, uh, you actually graded mine. I came in and delivered it. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, I can't remember it. <laughs> but it was a brilliant portfolio. <laughs> okay, no, that's cool, you know. And then Jean said, uh, can you submit a sketchbook for the project day? You can, absolutely. If you have any work to show at the end of the project day, it would be lovely, I think, for somebody to work through the project day and submit that as, a, as, a, as a notebook, you know, or a sketchbook, especially a really full sketchbook, you know. Uh, that would be super cool, you know. Programs mainly used during the, the study, we use uh, all of Adobe Suite, you know, from Photoshop all the way up to After Effects, uh, Premiere, uh, Audacity, the whole lot. We use uh, uh, audio programs, we use um, uh, TV Paint, we use Toon Boom Harmony uh, on the 2D animation side. Um, on the CG side, uh, we use uh, Autodesk Maya, uh, we use uh, things like uh, uh, Cinema 4D, Blender, the whole lot, you know, so again, we try to buy as many of the programs as we can, and some of them are really expensive now, okay? But we try to buy as many of the programs as we can for the students, you know, and, uh, you know, um, you know, we, we try then to support them in the learning through intensive workshops and then through uh, ongoing support through their projects, you know? 
Can I Person, yeah, go jump ahead. in on, yep. on, on Charlotte's one there? Yep. Just that that's a, a good question about the, the personal statement and, and yep. what we're we're looking for with the C V. I mean, we really I, I suppose we want to get a sense of who you are. Um, you know, so don't feel that you have to stick to, you know, uh, kind of academic achievements or anything like that. Um, you may well have interests that that seem to you to be tangential, or you might have had experiences in the past with something um, that might appear to be outside the world of animation, like maybe you had experiences with, with uh, you know, with dance yeah. or with uh, or drama. Or yeah. Or drama, yeah, oh or 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 really, um, you know, there's there are very few activities really that don't that don't dovetail in some way with animation. So to give us as 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 broad a sense of of who you are and what your interests are and the kind of things that you've 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 tried out in the past, and don't feel that it has to be very kind of narrowly directed towards um, animation or or towards um, or towards academic achievement, yeah. and. Uh, the, the, there was something, there was another uh, question there, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, sorry, Quiva's question there, just about accommodation. Um, I mean, our students, uh, many of them do stay uh, close to Dunleary. Uh, there are various reasons why. Um, I mean, this is, you know, students who come, who are from, from outside Dublin, in some cases will stay, uh, obviously, you know, there's, there's the, the kind of, uh, you know, the, the pragmatics of the, the, the current housing uh, situation to be dealt with. But we have students that are dotted around the the, the city and not necessarily uh, exclusively close to uh, to Dunleary and not even necessarily within uh, Dublin or the, Dub the greater Dublin area. Students do uh, and, and staff do yeah. travel, um, you know, um, from from outside Dublin as well. And um, so. Um, you know, Dunleary obviously to be to be close to Dunleary is is desirable, but it's by no means uh, essential or or not even necessarily typical. Yeah, that's it. You know, and then Kira says, you know, I live an hour away from Dunleary and plan to get there by train. Look, we we have people coming, you know, kind of good distances. You know, uh, mm. you know, and uh, th that's always even be before the current housing crisis. Uh, you know, th you mm. know, uh, people have travelled. Uh, you know, I remember, you know, with students regularly coming from Malahide, they had to leave at six o'clock every morning, and that was their reality. You know, but you know, they were in, and you know, they they got it done, and uh, they completed their studies successfully. You know, and then Arthur says, and we go back on this thing. You know, Arthur says, you know. You know, just out of curiosity, where are the the points for entry so scarily high? I mean, you know, again, apologies about this, Arthur. Really, the the it's a, it's a function of the demand for the program, you know, the interest in the the study program, and then the fact that you know we have limited space in in the buildings we have, you know. Uh, so we try to um, we don't want to restrict, but we we've got to restrict uh, the 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 student numbers to about thirty a year. Um, we did experiment increasing the number. I think, uh, you know, we have, um, uh, we didn't, but, uh, you know, it was done. I think we have about 48 or something in year two at the moment, you know, however that happened. But, uh, um, you know, it's much more successful if it's a smaller group. It's much more our teaching ethos and we try to get around everybody. We try to know people by name, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, so again, um, we're trying everything possible to bring those points down and also to get a kind of uh, more varied and inclusive user group. And uh, the other thing is, you know, we have spaces available for, um, you know, and admissions, uh, you know, Mary and Arla can talk a little bit more about this too. You know, uh, we have spaces available for uh, mature students. You know, we have space available for, for people who come from fee, pa fee tech pathways for here and their students, et cetera, et cetera. So we are trying our best to be as inclusive as possible and uh, we do have a nice group and you know they really are uh, don't be a bit intimidated by the points just put your best foot forward and uh, concentrate on your level uh, leaving put in the portfolio you have rather than the portfolio you think you should have and uh, we will deal with it from there you know Okay, what else is there then? Is accommodation very expensive? Well, sadly, you know, nationally accommodation is very expensive, but South Dublin is one of the most expensive places in the country. So again, you know, um, there is accommodation available and our students do stay locally and then uh, others find accommodation elsewhere. Um, and they get in every morning and uh, we, we take from there, okay? Um. That's it. And then a couple of dates then about uh, uh, portfolio application dates and Mary is, I think, dealing with those, you know. OK, anything else about the portfolio? Hey, Tess. Hi, Mary. How are you? 
that's it. You're coming in there. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say just about the portfolio uh, <laughs> yeah. dates and everything like that is the main thing is is to get your application um in on or before the first of february we'll then communicate with you by email um just acknowledging that we've received your application for animation and invite you for the project days uh virtually between the 13th and the 15th of february you only need to attend one um and we'll communicate that with you and register you and get you sorted for that um and then as I said, it's interactive so it's encouraged that you you know have your camera on um i was lingering in michael's session last year and it was really i think they were all engaging and forgot that myself and michael were there and they were talking among themselves and it's great to see everyone's work so it's really collaborative and interactive so it is great um, and then the submission for any of the work that you did in the project day with the feedback and the portfolio you have you submit that honour before the 20th of March at 5pm um, in admissions we can see everything's gone in you know it's it's uploaded okay that um, you know people want to check and give us a call that's fine we can do that no problem um, and then you receive your results within two to three weeks by email from ourselves after the submission deadline so you can see how you got on um, in the portfolio but the main thing is is get your application in uh, nice and early before the 1st of February because after that deadline if you don't have the application in mm. then you can't add it on any any later and yeah. um, but that's how we invite you to the project days and everything but also just to add is is um, I, I think that a lot of students um, who may have done the leaving certificate for example during Covid might have put, you know put off doing a CEO application or defer the CEO application over the last two years, which I do think had an impact on the points as well, overall inflation. Um, but that, and I do agree there's a lot of yeah. routes here, there, mature students, QQI, FeeTech, um, that students can apply and we'd encourage you to do yeah. so. Yeah, Sophie asks as well, do you accept people straight from school or do you recommend a portfolio course? Both Michelle and Ewan here um, uh, came straight in from school. OK, so very high achievers. My God, they did a leave insert and they did a fantastic portfolio and they were straight in. I mean, it's just kind of a miracle to be able to do that. I got to say, though, as well, the, the saving grace is that, you know, about 50 percent of our students do uh, another course, OK, a portfolio course or whatever. And this is cool. OK, it sounds, oh, my God, they had to take another year. No, look, it allows you a portfolio course or a preparatory course or a course in another college or whatever. It often allows you to concentrate, to focus on art 24 seven for a whole year and to prepare your portfolio, even to make yourself stronger for the program. So, again, don't be a bit discouraged uh, by the fact that uh, you know people do do other courses with great success and then they come to us as well you know they're a little bit more prepared they're more ready and they get you know a lot out of the course you know I, you know i'm sure you know michelle and ewan were you know uh you know straight in from school uh you know i'm sure our judgment was they were as prepared as they needed to be you know but uh, again it's a miracle that anyone can come straight from school into a you know uh you know a really intensive program uh you know uh, like ours you know does applying for courses, uh, different uh, courses in IETT require a different CAO application? Mary, you answered that one there clearly. Yes, I did. Yep. I just said yep. that you can put yes. all, you can put ten IETT courses down on the CAO application. Yep. You just the main thing is your preference. So put your genuine. If animations your your dream course, put it as preference number one, um, yep. and put it in genuine order of preference. So put one, two, etc. onwards, and yep. then there's level six and sevens as well but yeah, yeah it's the same CEO number and you just populate yeah. your 10 preferences and Alex is asking again uh, could you give us examples of relevant photographs for the portfolio I think that's probably um, uh, photographs of the work uh, the, uh, submitted digitally, you know. Um, I don't know if we have any that we can publish because, again, the the portfolio submissions are, you know, the submissions that belong to the students involved, Alex. So um, we'll check that out and see if we can give some examples and maybe uh, make those available on the day during the project days as well, if that would help. Again. The main thing is, as Michelle said earlier, you know, you know, follow the guidelines on the website, you know, get nice light for your uh, your work, arrange it. You know, Michelle explained that, you know, it took her about a day to uh, focus on it, uh, you know, get nice photographs on her phone and then upload those to the uh, the, the website, you know, um, including any videos you have of notebooks, etc. You know, so it's it's it. 
it sounds like a lot of work to do, but it's actually a really nice process to do it. And uh, you should get a really good sense of accomplishment when it is uploaded. And we are absolutely delighted to see the work coming in, you know, fabulous, you know. Yep. Michael. Um, no, that's that's I, I was just going to to uh, speak to that that question there about the. Um, that you that you just uh, respond the, the yeah. photographs yeah i mean i yeah, would say yeah. again I, I think you you mentioned dave that there's uh peter evers has a a kind of a how-to uh guide that you can access through the portfolio guidelines uh page um on the website but it, it is um yeah, yeah. i just reiterate yeah. just take take time and it make sure the lighting is good make sure the resolution is is yeah. is, is good and you know take you know, multiple yeah. shots of 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 yeah. each image or object or whatever it takes, and and yeah. Uh, yeah. And Kira gives a great explanation there of uh, doing a portfolio PLC course. Incredibly mm. fun. The extra year is fantastic. Time to hone your skills. She's drawn every day, five days. I mean, this is just great stuff. Like, <laughs> you know, mm. this is this is you know, this is great. And again, you mm. know, you know, I I I come back to it. You know, people do these portfolio preparatory courses. They even do other animation courses uh, in Ireland, and then they come to us and they do those courses with great success. And you know, those courses want to hold on to them but no they say i want to come to idt animation and you know they know why you know um what is it like in this course to go from graduating to getting a job charlotte really you know it's totally up to you you know there are great opportunities in uh you know in 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 ireland in dublin uh, to get uh, jobs in animation at the moment you know it's a matter of preparing your work and preparing your portfolio and the rest of it uh, you know angling yourself up to a specific studio if you want uh, a lot of our studio uh, students as well want to do their own work they want to set up their own creative teams their own studios as well and that's something we would really encourage them and over the coming years with the development of year three is as well in the new shape of the program you know they'll have much more uh, business skills entrepreneurial skills and opportunities uh, to do that you know so uh, you know we we would uh, really encourage them michelle where do you want to end up you know when you graduate with success in 18 months time <laughs> oh gosh um, i'm quite interested in um, in pursuing education a bit more so maybe yeah. like thinking about doing a master's course Woo here right. of course <laughs> i feel like you can never stop learning and i love learning so I feel no, like that's, that's a great environment to be in. Yeah, no, that's something I'd really encourage. And then you, and where do you think you'll, uh, the, uh, what, what pathway will you take? Um, I actually apply for the JET program. So yeah. I, if I'm successful, I'll be going off to Japan for yeah. um, a year or so. But yeah. in the end goal, if possible, I'd like to be in like 2D pre-production, um, yeah. design characters or whatnot. Yeah, and again, focus on the design, 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 which you love. You know, that's really a great, you know, absolutely fabulous. Any extracurriculars? I suppose you're talking about socks and, you know, Michelle, what do you think? Uh, societies, student societies in IDT, you know? Oh, uh, they're really fun. Uh, I participate in the climbing society. So um, once or twice a week, you go climbing at the wall. Um, it's a really great time. I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there are an awful lot of uh, clubs and socks, uh, you know, in, in IGT, you know, and some really crazy ones, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, uh, every year uh, they 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 vary. <laughs> That's it, you know? Just maybe something that, that relates tangentially to that as well is just that there are a couple of curricular opportunities to play around uh, outside your home programme. Uh, so in first year and second year, you get a couple of weeks where you can dabble in uh, in short modules that are being offered by other programs. So you can try your hand at a bit, you know, a bit of you know photography or or um, or or you could dip into the psychology program or uh, you know or you could do a bit of comics or you could do you know the so there's, there's there are those opportunities within um, within the curriculum as well. That's and of course, there's an animation yeah. society. That's another uh, extracurricular if you want more animation. Yeah, and historically, uh, the animation society has usually been one of the biggest societies mm. and one of the wealthiest societies in IADG. Yeah. You know, yeah. but they do kind of uh, screenings each week, usually, etc. So, you know, it can be quite fun, you know. So uh, when you're in IADG, uh, we'll be looking for you to run the anim, anim stock, as we call it, you know. Mm. 
Uh, that's it. Uh, so people are asking, you know, do you have to score 600? No, you don't. People do get in with 400 on the portfolio, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, again, look, you know, don't obsess about the scores or it like this. You know, basically, uh, you know, th- say the, the the minimum, the pass is 240. Really, you know, anyone over 300 has a chance of getting in, you know. Now, it would mean that you'd have to have a, a you know, really good leave in South, et etc. et cetera. But, you know, to be honest, uh, it's you push the portfolio in. Don't be obsessing about the numbers. Don't be looking at last year's numbers. They're irrelevant. You know, just put the portfolio you have in and see how it goes. Hopefully, chances are it's ready to go and we, we'll deal with it. And again, you know, if it pans out that it, it, it's not, you know, you, you do, as Kira said, you know, you take it take a deep breath and then you have a plan B, you do a portfolio preparation course in your locality or whatever, uh, have some fun for a whole year, concentrate on your art, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. If you do a bad leaving cert in a good portfolio, you still have a chance. You do. I mean, you know, absolutely. You know, it, you know, it, you still have a chance. But again, Sophie, it totally depends on the numbers, you know, and again, the numbers are not something that we can control at all. We wish we could, but we can't, you know, and we're not a bit proud uh, also of the numbers being so high at all you know uh, we hate the numbers being high uh, but it's just a function that it's a very popular course there's a lot of applications and you know but remember you people are probably the successful ones you know so that the, if you get under a thousand points it's a chance of getting in yes Arthur I sincerely hope so you know what I mean we're doing what we can to bring the the numbers down you know can you combine courses in IADT um, that's a great Question, Eleni. It's difficult. I mean, at the moment, we would say at undergraduate level in our faculty, it's not really something that's doable, you know. Um, however, if you're interested in other programs when you're here and there's a real good rationale, you can, you know, study modules on that. As this, as Michael said earlier, there are quite a number of cross-faculty interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary opportunities from first year through second year. Um, you know, again, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's tricky to negotiate. You know, it is possible, says Mary, but the applicants need to meet the entry requirements, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yep. That's it. Um, now, and then my plan B, uh, Kira says, is if my portfolio doesn't get upset this year, do animation drawing in Bali Firma for a year. And then look, some people do animation in, Belly Farmer for two years with great success and then come to us. You know, again, it's your young people. You have a 50 year career ahead of you. OK, so don't be worried about, you know, oh, oh my God, I'm spending another year on my education. Look, it's lifelong learning. All of us. I've been in the business, you know, and Michael will testify to this. <laughs> I've been in it about 50 years and I still learn from the students every day. You know, that's it. OK, <laughs> you know, again, it's 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 nonstop, you know, and we have great respect for the programs in uh, Colossal Dulig, you know, in Ballyfermot, in Gorey, in, you know, uh, Arclo. It's, you know, I mean, really, they're 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 great programs and and, you know, we rely on them to feed really good prepared applicants to us every year. OK, good and good. Uh, Kira, look, great for having a plan B, a plan of action, etc. What is the average no or number of points uh, of uh, points portfolios received? Uh, what would that know? The average number of points portfolios received. What's it? What is it? The average number of, of portfolios received, uh, Michael, do you think? Um, uh, mm, was that is that about do we know is that about a hundred and yeah fifty yeah it's, it's, between one hundred and fifty maybe yeah. up to two yeah I'd say a couple, to couple yeah I'd say a couple of hundred portfolios my age yeah. usually you know. Um, you know, now we're really looking for people who are really focused on animation and really kind of know something about the program and have done these, uh, you know, spotlight sessions and open days, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, they, they tend to be the people who are quite focused on the thing, you know. Um, we do get some applicants that just are throwing the portfolio into every course and they don't really want to do animation, and you know, they're weeded out sadly very quickly, you know. Um, Kira says, I, uh, Colossal Dooley is what I mean, portfolio course on the Rohini campus. I mean, again, we've great friends over in Dooley, you know, a lot of our graduates are over there teaching in Dooley, etc. And we have a very nice relationship with them, etc. And then I live in Gorey, what animation courses? There? There's very strong uh, uh, portfolio prep- preparatory courses in Gorey, you know, uh, so uh, look into what's in the local area there, you know. But 
uh, really have to be concentrating on the portfolio, bang the portfolio in this year if you can, you know, uh, if you're going to apply, you know, and just see where you are. You're going to get feedback in the portfolio application, uh, even if you were not successful, which I'm absolutely not suggesting that you won't be successful, but you will get feedback and it's very useful in terms of your development, et cetera, et cetera, you know, what you might concentrate on, what you might look at, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, so uh, but I think look at some options in the uh, the the further education colleges in the in the Gordy area, and uh, you might find some very interesting options there. You know, okie doke. Anything else then we can uh, we can contribute to? You know, um, what do you think? I mean, you know, you and and you know Michelle, you know, you're in the in the course now. We give out about the course all the time about what could be done better and all the rest of it. You know, what do you think though? You know, on the balance of it, you know, what are the kind of strengths of the course for you in terms of the student experience? What do you think, Michelle? Uh, I think it's uh, finding potential people you want to work with. Yeah, uh, I think the course attracts a very like like minded group of people. So we all learn from each other. We all bounce from each other. And we also get the chance to work on each other's films so we can contribute to fourth year films, which I think is a great experience. And you also learn how to work on your own films. So I really like that aspect of it. Yeah, that's good. And you and what do you think? um i would say there's two big things um firstly that we have like a range of lectures from different disciplines so um we would learn like different types of animation from like paper cutout to sand animation 3d duty like we have a lot of options um and then loads of our lectures would be really good different disciplines so it's really nice to have everyone at your disposal if you have any questions and then secondly IET like um, everyone would say the student services and the staff and student rapport is really good so yeah you have the loads of services like medical center student counseling um personal advice like on on top almost like it's just there if you reach for it yeah no, that's a good point. That's a fair point. I think it is in general, you know, for students, you know, uh, and, you know, some, we try to improve all the time, but, you know, it is a pretty supportive environment, you know, and again, it's a very, you know, informal environment socially, you know, we, we the, the, the students come in as students, but really, you know, uh, we want to treat them as adults. We want to treat them as colleagues very quickly, you know. Um, Alfie says, I'm terrible at maths. Do I still have a chance? Of course you do. Yes, I'm terrible at maths too, Alfie. You know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know that, that's no problem. We had a stipulation years ago that, you know, you had to, you know, achieve a certain level of maths and we removed it completely, you know, because again, there, there was, um, you know, there, there was nothing. Alex says, uh, can you transfer from this course to 3D animation? You can. I mean, you know, again, because 3D animation is a new program, Alex, and it's only going to start in, in September. Um, uh, there'll be 20 students from the start in us, you know, which is a small group. There may well be opportunities to transfer across. We don't know that. And transferring from one program to another is not kind of... Uh, uh automatic we'll say um it's a kind of it's a complicated uh, process for various different reasons you know um but uh you know again it is possible and you know it's not something that we kind of encourage right like this and uh but it could be possible uh we shall see you know we wouldn't say no okay okay that's it okay any other questions then or any other observations michael anything you uh that, that jumps out at you that you we we probably haven't answered at this stage. No, I, I mean, I was just thinking there as as Michelle and Ewan were talking, you know, I, I think uh, there's there's a really nice kind of family atmosphere. Um, if that doesn't sound too cheesy <laughs> amongst uh, amongst the student groups, I mean, I think they they make friends for life and and, you know, working partners and make connections that last for life and they they have a great laugh while they're making those those friends and, and connections. So um, I, I do think that, that that has to do with the the um, the size of the classes as well and, and various things. But it's I, I think it's it's something that graduates will often say about their time at IADT, and it's very important. Yeah, and it's something as well that you know 
there you know there's a lot of this kind of you know silly work ethic uh, you know in terms of the animation mm -hmm. industry and it's a, it's a terrible career because everybody works hard and they all get divorced and all this sort of stuff that's not anything that we encourage in our program at all you know um you know we like a, a kind of a healthy work life balance you know when the students are in projects and the rest of it, we really are encouraging them not to overwork not to stress out not to do meltdowns not to do all night or all this sort of stuff because we really think that's working on professionally and you know again you will have long long careers 40 50 years and in order to do that you need to stay healthy you know you you can't be having meltdowns or you know uh you know uh, serious health issues you know uh, mental health issues or physical health issues and we've had that in the past and you know it's unforgivable it's not something that we support so again you know we really um encourage students to kind of learn the way to work health, healthily and in a sustained way uh, so that they'll have a long career and a creative career, you know. And then apart from the point score, do you have any preference for Irish students over the international? Oh, my God, no. Oh, Virginia, that would be illegal. <laughs> you know, not at all. It's the other way. Around. We just, you know, we had it a long time ago that, you know, we said that we won't be successful as a study program until we see a lot of international applicants. And to be honest, COVID was an amazingly trans, uh, transformative moment for us because because all of the processes of application and the spotlight sessions etc moved online of necessity it meant that people from all around the world from india and brazil and russia and all these other places could join the sessions and could see what the application process was like and then could apply and those people are now coming through um uh, you know very successfully you know real international uh, true international applicants uh coming from you know places like egypt and you know wherever i mean it's it's incredible sweden the lot all across europe the lot you know? so you know we really um you know uh, encourage everybody to come um and then uh you know mary says uh, uh, no preferences at all you're playing as eu or non-eu yeah that is one difference is that you know again eu um uh, applicants uh, apply by the CAO, you know, and, uh, you know, again, EU applicants, uh, you know, have a particular uh, fee structure, you know, it, it can be uh, 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 non-EU applicants apply directly to uh, IAGT. That's a great point, Mary, there. Yeah, absolutely good. But no, the more international applicants we have, uh, the, the better, you know. Do I have permission to add you to my sketchbook? <laughs> Are you drawing me as you go? Everyone does. What, with my crazy beard? <laughs> yes, you do. Absolutely. Add, add me to your sketchbook, you know, <laughs> providing it's good. <laughs> no. That's it. No, you have permission, Alex. <laughs> That's it. And again, thank you to all of you there, to uh, you know, to, to Alexandra and to uh, you know, uh, uh, Kira, all the others up along there, uh, you know, for for your comments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I hope we've answered, uh, uh, you know, most. Do you take bribes? <laughs> Asking for friends, <laughs> as Arthur. You know, well, you know, no, we don't. Absolutely. <laughs> Bribes in the in the form of flattering portraits. Uh, They're flattering the portraits, yes. You know, artistic <laughs> bribes, yes, definitely. You know, yeah. that's it. No, we don't take bribes. <laughs> Listen, man, the beard is very drawable, says Kira. <laughs> that's it. It's kind of I don't know. It's kind of hmm. <laughs> every morning I wonder. <laughs> that's it. You know, Mary has anyway. Any additional queries? Feel free to email admissions yeah, or phone. And again. Uh, our emails are at the end of the PDF. Uh, I think uh, uh, Arla and Mary and Ruth will upload that PDF of the PowerPoint presentation from earlier um, uh, up onto the uh, website somewhere as well. So you'll be able to find that. And our emails are available there. They're also available through the website. Just go onto the animation study program, the information there, and you'll see that Michael and David are the two co-chairs and our email addresses are there, okay? Um, so, you know, just email us, um, you know, again, if there's a question that you is really bugging you and you feel you can't get the uh, 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 your head around the answer, uh, you know, it's probably something very simple and don't worry about it. There are no stupid questions in this. You know, if it's bugging you, just send us an email and we'll try to, to, to answer, you know, and, you know, sometimes the questions uh, 
you know, they're kind of a function of kind of overthinking the process a little bit too much, you know, and if that's the case, we'll just say that to you, look, you know, wait a sec now, chill here, and uh, this is simpler than you're thinking. You know, where can I find a recording of this call? I think that's for Mary to answer there, because I don't it, know. Yeah, yeah, so it will be, <laughs> so where you registered for the spotlight oh, yeah. session, it'll right. be um, available the, uh, before the end of the week. So yeah. it'll be, um, it'll be there'll be a button and you'll see on the other ones that we've previously gone through it'll say watch back and that'll be before the end of the week so you'll be able to watch back if you want to really get all the finer details of the beard for sketches. <laughs> That's it. Okay, that's it. And you can freeze frame the recording as well. Like, I don't, <laughs> you know. are we nearly done, Mary? Do you think, or will we uh, I th continue? I th yeah, I, th I, th I think so. I think. Yeah. I think. Th I, th I think we can leave it there. As I said, yeah. if you've any any additional queries, if you direct them to admissions at idt.e, yeah. we'll see if we can answer them and we can divert them, um, yeah. if if needed, to the relevant um people here yeah. but um yeah, yeah thank you so much orla Definitely. and uh, for you and, and michelle and michael yeah. and david um and yeah best of luck and That's applications it. in as i said before the first of february and uh we'll look forward to seeing you all the project days online so yeah, yeah. bye That's everyone it. Best of luck, y'all. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Yuan. Great job. Thanks, Michelle.